In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome to Comet Chasing, where we track the fuzzy wanderers of our solar system with a focus on seeing them for yourself. We've got a comet visible in small telescopes in August and an update on the interstellar comet 3i Atlas. And Greg Crinklaw, the astronomer behind this channel, goes on a rant about Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb. You won't want to miss that. Let's start with an update on 3i Atlas. You'll see breathless headlines about this comet claiming that it is huge, zooming through the solar system, astronomers are shocked, and even that it's an alien spacecraft. Let's cut through the shameless clickbait and take a look at what we've actually discovered so far and maybe provide a little perspective along the way. A paper by Chandler et al. presented observations by the new Rubin telescope that found clear signs of a coma in serendipitous observations made in June. By definition, the difference between a rocky minor planet and a comet is the presence of a coma made up of gas or dust. There is no question that this is a comet. By the way, some people routinely refer to one eye Oumuamua as a comet, but it's not because no coma was ever detected. And for the pedants out there, one eye isn't an asteroid either, because asteroids are a subset of minor planets found in the inner solar system. So it's best to call it an interstellar object, or maybe an interstellar minor planet. A recent paper by Feinstein et al. presents photometry from observations by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS. Observations made prior to discovery indicate that this comet may have been active as far as 6.4 astronomical units from the Sun. Yang et al. presented near-infrared spectroscopy, which shows a red optical spectrum similar to D-type asteroids. This would likely represent the dust emissions in the coma. The D-type asteroids are likely rich in carbonaceous material, organics, and possibly water ice beneath the surface. Their observations are also consistent with the presence of large water ice grains. Interestingly, this comet more closely resembles Jupiter family comets than distant trans-Neptunian objects. Jupiter family comets are thought to originate far out in the solar system as trans-Neptunian objects. But their current properties are likely the result of entering the inner solar system repeatedly. This implies that 3I once passed close to a star repeatedly before being ejected from the system, presumably by a massive planet. If so, then this will also affect how the comet brightens and our prospects for amateurs to spot it. Results from other telescopes confirm these observations. A paper by De La Fuente Marcos et al. presents a light curve, which is a graph of how the brightness changes over time. They found a small sinusoidal variation indicating a rotation period of about 17 hours. In comparison, the light curve of Oumuamua was much more complex and indicative of an elongated shape rotating irregularly. But 3i is a comet with a coma, and most of the light we detect is reflected sunlight from this coma, so we are not likely to be able to detect complex rotations that can lead to clues about its shape. So to sum up, we have a comet with a coma and short tail. The coma is composed of reddish dust and water ice grains. Greg feels that this is the most interesting observation so far, because if this comet were from inside the solar system, and that's a big if, the color would indicate a comet that is not pristine, one that is not on its first pass, close to a star. But the two papers that have received the most media attention are this one by Loeb, and a follow-up by him and two colleagues. Over to you, Greg. I sort of hate giving this any attention, but I feel the need to speak up. In this paper, the authors cite that two distinct natural explanations present themselves. One where the object is an asteroid, and one where the object is a comet. Loeb went on a media tour talking about this idea. If it turned out to be an asteroid, they claimed that it would have a large diameter, which in turn would be unlikely based on some rather weak statistical arguments regarding distributions of interstellar objects. That, in turn, suggests that it's alien technology. So this is a rather silly leap. But worse than that, by the time this paper was presented and Loeb went on his media tour, it had long been known that the object was cometary. In fact, as early as July 2nd, the day after it was discovered, a coma had been observed. One wonders what the point of this was. The authors 
also make a statistical argument that the chances of 3i Atlas randomly taking this path through the solar system is highly unlikely. They calculate it as 0.005%. That sounds pretty remarkable, but let's examine how their statistical approach actually works. Imagine you roll a die and get a 6 at exactly 4.20 p.m. in a 69 degree room. Using Loeb's approach, we can calculate that this specific combination has less than a 0.001% chance of happening. It's incredibly rare. But here's the problem. We picked those details after the roll happened. The die had to land on some number at some time in some temperature. Every possible outcome would seem just as miraculous if you calculated its odds afterward. In a very real way, when applied to a single occurrence, all outcomes are better described as being equally likely rather than super rare. This is called post hoc reasoning, drawing a bullseye around the arrow after it lands. With 3i Atlas, Loeb points to the comet's specific flyby distances from three planets and calculates a 0.005% probability. But like the dice roll, this comet had to follow some path through the solar system. Picking out the exact details afterward and calling them suspicious is the same logical error. The authors suggest it was, and I quote from the paper, a fun premise. The idea that science requires nonsense to be fun makes me want to throw things. This is science, not ghost hunting. On the other hand, the comet's visible coma and natural orbit while not fun, are much stronger evidence. Science at its core is about reliably separating truth from wishful thinking. It only works when we follow the evidence wherever it leads. It only works when we try to falsify our ideas rather than to try to prove them. I cringe when I see this sort of thing from Lowe, but it's not because of what he is claiming it's because he is doing science backward. He is doing science badly. And when you do that, your results are unreliable at best and misleading at worst. It would be bad enough if he published his papers quietly, but he parades his nonsense in front of the public. And that's unforgivable. Most scientists accept that they have a role to play in educating the public, not only about what we have learned, but in how we have learned it to explain how science works. To many, it's almost a sacred duty. The price of his fame and fortune is to do damage to this work. He is undermining science in the view of the public by bolstering nutters and conspiracy theorists and subtly suggesting that science is closed-minded and dull. He hides behind claims that he is only being open-minded, having a bit of fun and that he is merely playing a sort of devil's advocate. But make no mistake, that is not, in fact, what he's doing. That's a delusion. What Loeb does, starting with an exciting conclusion and then working backward, is the opposite of open-minded. It's confirmation bias, dressed up as curiosity. And hey, don't get me wrong. If this comet suddenly puts on the brakes to make a closer approach to the Earth, or go into Mars orbit, then that's the proper time to start writing about it being alien tech in the scientific literature. It's evidence that matters. It accomplishes nothing to make meaningless speculations supported by specious statistics, unless your goal is media attention rather than science. You know, Greg, most astronomers are thinking these same things. I think it's time somebody just came out and said it. So, what is the actual deal with 3i Atlas? Let's have a little perspective. You will hear it referred to as having anomalous properties, but compared to what? We know it came from interstellar space. So what's normal? When people hear that it came from outside the solar system, their brains go into sci-fi mode. Let's ignore that for a minute. We know there has to be a lot of ejected material out there from the star formation process, so it would be quite odd if we didn't see anything approach from outside the solar system. To my way of thinking, 
The idea that the sun is surrounded by an enormous unseen cloud of comets from which comets suddenly and mysteriously get sent falling toward the sun is a lot harder to wrap my head around, especially given that they come from all directions. And this has continued for 4.5 billion years without running out of comets. We have proposed mechanisms for this, but when it comes down to it, we really have no idea. And we only have the most general idea of how so many comets would end up in such distant and tenuous orbits in the first place. To my mind, that is a much bigger puzzle, or mystery, than an interstellar comet. So much of the response to this comet simply comes down to what I said about brains going into sci-fi mode. If you are looking for entertainment, then never mind. This is not the right channel for you. But if you really are interested in the objective truth, be careful and be wary when consuming media written by people whose goal is to entertain and make money rather than to inform. Let's talk a bit about our prospects of seeing 3i Atlas in the telescope. So far it's brightening regularly and not showing any signs of outburst behavior. If it keeps following the current trend, it will reach a maximum brightness of 14.5 magnitude in early November. If the coma remains small and compact, it might be visible in telescopes as small as 16 inches from early December through the end of the year. We will have better predictions as we get closer to November. Meanwhile, we do have a comet that we can view in small telescopes this month, Comet C 2025 K1 Atlas. If 3i wasn't stealing the show, our full attention would be on this one, and it deserves a look. C 2025 K1 Atlas will pass within 0.3 astronomical units of the Sun in early October, and it is unlikely to survive. Unless it brightens dramatically as it disintegrates, this month is going to be the best month to see it. In August 2025, K1 is visible in small telescopes as seen from a dark site, from both hemispheres. From a country sky, it will be visible in a 6-inch scope. It'll be best visible after evening twilight from August 11th through the end of the month. In the eyepiece, look for a 45 arc second coma with a 6 arc minute tail. Use averted vision to bring out the tail and the fainter surrounding coma. Well, that's it for August. Be sure to get out there and look at 2025 K1 and we'll see you next month. Clear skies and happy comet chasing.